In this video, we'll be looking at popover. Now, I'm going to say this, you know, if I don't say it directly, it's kind of inferred. But for all the overlay sections of the Chakra Library, they're all insanely similar to some degree. So when you talk about one in the abstract, you're, you know, you could be talking about two or three at the same time. But each of them provide a different kind of way to overlay, display information, you know, that kind of just lays on top of your current page or application. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at popover. What is it? Even kind of more importantly, at least in this section, what do they look like? And then after that, we're going to be uh, doing some coding. So let's just make our way over to the documentation. So we see it says popover is a non-modal dialog that floats around a trigger. It is used to display contextual information to the user and should be paired with a clickable trigger element. All right, and it's also built on top of the Popper JS library. Feel free to go look at that. That's out of the scope of this video, but you know this is pretty popular. I've seen this in a bunch of other places. And so we have a bunch of stuff coming in here. This is, I would say, one of the more complex. It's not hard to use, but I would say more complex type of um, components or series of components that forms, you know, one thing together. And so we have the popover. Uh, it says the wrapper that provides props, state, and context to its children. We have the trigger, which is used to wrap the reference or trigger element. We have the popover itself, the header of the popover, the body of the popover, and then the visual arrow, which you'll see what that means in a moment and then a button that will close the popover. So it's all very self-contained. You don't have to add anything else in specifically. You have the things to open, close, point to where it's coming from, and then places to slap your content. So let's look at a basic one right here. We click it, and we see that there's this built-in arrow right here, which is kind of nice. We have this box around here. We have the close button. And then we have this, um, you know, confirmation right here. And then we have this body. So if we're looking at this right here, we have the body. Are you sure you want to have that milkshake, which is right here? And then above that is the header, which is confirmation. And then the self-closing, uh, both of them right here, we have the pop the popover close button and the arrow. The close button right here is here, and then the arrow is right here. We come out of there and we have this popover trigger and inside of there is this just button. Now we can assume this is a shocker UI button, but I imagine you could customize this to your heart's um, you know, content. And it says when using this component, ensure the children pass to popover trigger is focusable. Users can tab to it using their keyboard and it can take a ref. This is critical for accessibility. So just keep that in mind. If odds are you throw a button in here, you're going to be good to go. If you throw some other gobbledygook in there, um, you know, it may yell at you or you, you just may have parts of your website now that are not accessible. And popovers could also be used with portals. I don't think we've covered portals yet at this point. Um, they're basically a way of, a, if I remember right, attaching stuff to the document body of your application. And so it says by default, the popover doesn't render in a portal. To make them display in a portal, wrap the popover content in a portal. So this is the same thing as before, and we're just putting it in a portal, opening and closing you know, um, element right here, and then everything you know, in the portal kind of takes over after that. I'm not going to go over exactly what a portal is in this video because it's out of scope. And I think there's enough going on in popovers without talking about a competing component. But just look and or wait for my video on portals and it should give you a bit more context. But I don't know how many people are going to want to put them in a portal right away. I don't know what strategy uh, benefits that would be for you. But I imagine nine times out of ten, this is what your use case would look like. And so we could do stuff also with uh, focusing on elements when the popover opens. And it says, by default, focus is sent to popover content when it opens. We could pass the initial focus ref prop 
to send focus to a specific element inside. So there may be a lot of mumbo jumbo. Let's explain how it works. So we have this trigger here. Cool, we're gonna click it, but let's look at the code first. We have this initial focus ref. And then what we're doing is there's this prop in here called initial focus ref. So, you know, naming these the same thing is a smart idea, you know where it's going. So we have this initial focus ref. And this means that when you send it, this signal here is gonna say, hey, I'm actually gonna send my, my reference, my focus to, to a very specific area. And as we can see down here, that area is gonna be the blue button, color scheme blue, that says next. So let's go up to it. And it is hard to see with this color, but if you go to this website and actually go to it, you can see that the outline of this is blue here. And you could, maybe not on your screen, but on mine, I, it is even a little bit hard for me, uh, just because the background is so dark here, that this is in focus when you open it up. Now, as I click outside like that, you see the next button, like gyrate like that. That is also another way of showing that this is the thing in focus. So once again, you use the use ref hook right here. You pass this value into pop over saying, hey, I'm about ready to point when this thing sets off. Uh, I want you to look at a very specific element. And then all you do is you go to wherever you want and uh, say ref equals. And this is the reference point that's going to get passed to it. And so this one, this next example, I'm not going to go over. That sounds like a cheap cop out, but it uses React Focus Lock. I've never heard of this before. And I'm not going to talk about a library that doesn't make sense. Um, so if you use React Focus Lock, just know they have a case for you here inside of the documentation to come back to. I'm not going to talk about and or learn a whole library just for this one example. So if you do use it or you have any comments, uh, leave them down below, but I'm just gonna skip over this for just ease of understanding. And so here we have control usage. It says you could control the opening and closing of the popover by passing the is open and on close props. Sometimes you might need to set the return focus on close prop to false to prevent the popover from returning focus to the popover triggers children. And so if we're looking at this on here, we have this return focus on close right here. It's set to false. And so let's read this one more time. It says, sometimes you might need to set the return focus on close prop to false to prevent the popover from returning focus to the popover's children. So this is also a way to set up state in here as well of we have this trigger right here, confirmation. Are you sure you want to continue with your action right here? We could click apply, click cancel, nothing's going on, but we could click that popover target here or the trigger in and of itself. And it's a way of controlling using the use state and some you know, helper functions in here to open and close the, the popover itself. That's essentially what this is getting at here. We also have internal state. So it says Shaka provides access to two internal states, is open and on close. Use the render prop pattern to gain access to them. So we have the most parent you know, component right here pop over. We have close on blur, false, placement left. We have an internal focus ref, which is um, you know, this thing right coming in here. But as you notice on the inside, we have access to is open and on close. So we could see that on click, when we have the close button here, that is firing off the ability to close this thing. We could click off of it here, but it's still not working to the degree which we you know, may desire it to. So this forces us to click this close button right here. And we see we have this ternary operator, so if it's, you know, depending on is open, it could, you know, let's say close or, or open on here. And then we could customize the popover in and of itself 
you can see that the popover trigger now has a box inside of here. And uh, it isn't the, uh, the, the most attractive, I guess you would say. But yeah, we just have this box here. We could click it. And now we have this bright orange, you know, crazy colored popover coming in right here. So the box itself is kind of ugly. Uh, no offense to whoever made this, but I mean, it's not pretty, right? So we could use this though as the you know way to set off the trigger, but then we could still come in here, give it the background font weight, you know, go into the close button, make it purple, have fun with it, and so you don't have to stick with you know the basics they give you out of the box. And so it says for the popover placement it says since popover is powered by Popper JS, you could change the placement of the popover by passing the placement prop. And so there's more prop values down below, which I think is interesting because in other parts of the documentation, they lay them all out for you, but they don't do that here, which I think is a little bit of a disservice because I don't want to scroll all the way down to see what they are. I kind of want to stop here and see what they are. So we have top start right here. If we go down to the props down below and we go look for placement, We have bottom, right, auto, auto end, right end, left start. You know, by default, it's on bottom. But these are all the different arguments you could provide in your documentation or in your code, I should say, from the documentation to set that up where you need it to be. So right now it's top start. If you wanted to enter any one of those, I don't know, it was like 12 or however many, you could do it to kind of like rotate around this button, which is nice. And that's cool too, because say you change different screen sizes or something, you know, maybe there's another dynamic element on your page and you realize when another element is present, it's better to shift it left than right or right than left. So I do like the fact that it gives you so many options on, on where to place where this comes up at. And then we have right here, we could lazily mount the popover. We're giving it the argument right here is lazy. And it says, by default, the popover component renders the children of popover content uh, into the DOM, meaning that um, invisible popover contents are still rendered, but, you know, they're hidden by styles. So if there's, you know, you need stuff to be extra performant and you don't want to load stuff in, maybe there's some network calls being made or, you know, whatever it is that, that may slow your user experience down, you could use is lazy. And that'll make um, you know any network calls or anything in that moment that they click the popover. The accessibility, when you see the word trigger, is referring to the children of the popover trigger. It's kind of interesting they put this here. But then we go over the keyboard focus, the ARIA attributes, and then the props. I recommend going over these, reading more about them, but I kind of want to just get to coding because um, I think this is one of those parts of the library you just kind of have to code up and get it moving and see how it goes. So let's do that. All right. In this tutorial, it's really just going to be a really, really quick one. We're going to create a popover and we're going to add, you know, a couple attributes to it to flash it up a little bit. So let's get to coding. So now that we have this all typed out here, let's walk through this example here. So you notice there's no state. There's just a lot of really just out of the box. Everything is shocker right here. So we have this button, which is this right here. And this is the trigger. What is this triggering? Well, let's click the button that says subscribe to my channel or I'll beat you at Fortnite. I'm really terrible at Fortnite. That is, that is a lie. But do follow the first four words here. That is important. So we click on this and then right below... We have confirmation. Good job. You subscribed to my channel. And it says, get ready for ratchet programming. Let's go. <laughs> and 
This is all being triggered in the popover uh, trigger right here in the outermost uh, popover. And then the content is everything you see in here. So we have the arrow, which as you could deduce is this little arrow right in here. And even just think about the CSS, like that could just be a lot of time where your boss is like, hey, let's make this really, you know, the sexy little arrow pointing up, right? And you're like, okay. And then, you know, you may spend a lot of time doing something like that, or there may be like 40 different ways of doing it. I don't know. I've never had to do this myself. But right here, you get out of the box. It's the little things like that that save you a lot of time when getting something out to production. Then we have the close button. Oh, look, you don't have to hook anything up to it. It just closes all by itself. That's pretty cool. And then let's click this again. We have our header confirmation right here. And then we have our popover body, which is, uh, you know, get ready for ratchet programming. So this is a uh, popover. But before we go, I want to show you a couple things that I think are pretty interesting. We have is lazy. And if you've seen some of my other tutorials, which I hope you have, this means that until you click this, this doesn't like exist in the page. Like this loads, comes in all that later on. So keep that in mind when testing, when you make things that are lazy, because sometimes you have to for large amounts of content, especially in more rural areas where there's just not fast internet. So just know it does that. Another thing I want to show is the placement. Now there's a lot of placements on here. I'm going to go through a couple, uh, maybe even four, and the rest y'all can play around with. I just want to show you generally what they do. So let's go bottom. So that seems to be the default bottom. Okay, not interesting. Nothing has changed. So let's change the placement again. Left end. So as we see this right here, we get the confirmation popping out on the side right there. Now that's left end. Let's, so it's on the left right there. Let's do right end. And it's definitely on the right here. So as you see on the left end here, if my button was placed on the right hand side here, once again, it gives you all these options. And just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. If your button is on the right hand side, Maybe it would definitely make sense to have it pop out on the left hand side. Maybe if you're also on like a desktop, right? But if you're on a smaller screen size, you may want to do something like top, which just makes it appear, at least for this screen size and interaction with everything else, right here. So keep these in mind as you're making different sizes and stuff. You still may be able to use a popover. Just be cognizant of what's around it and like what size the screen is. So let's do bottom end. And so you see the contents are shifted over right here. So placement is something you have to toggle with yourself. This is just a popover in a vacuum. But when you put this into your own code, just play around with it. And I'm sure that there's a setting tracker provides for you that will work because they're pretty robust in what they do. But if you like what I do, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about the channel. I super appreciate it. Leave some comments below and I uh, hope to see you all in the next video.